Hollywood and beautiful Santa Monica by the sea, home of America's premier comedy showcase, the world famous improvisation, it's A&E's and evening at the improv. Tonight, starring Ted McGinley. Well, we've been waiting for you. Come on in. And featuring the comedy of Reggie McFadden. Sue Kolinsky. George McKelvey. Ron White. And special guest, Van Gunter. Amazing what one can accomplish during the commercial break. Our final comedian of the night is a very well-known performer. He's toured with David Sanborn. He's appeared on Comic Strip Live and Showtime, and this is his second appearance on A&E. Please welcome Van Gunter. Van! Thanks, guys. Yeah, good crowd here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm used to working clubs during the week. You know, and earlier on in the week, they always have gimmicks to get people in. Things like two-for-one drink specials, ladies' night, and things like this. Guys ever notice, though, bars and nightclubs never have guys' night? <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. And guys, we know why, too. It's because if you can get any women into any establishment, guys are going to show up. <laughs> it's the first thing they want to know when they get to the door. Are women in there? Because that's the only thing they're thinking about. See, women are a little different. Every now and then, they want to get away from guys. And the only places women can go to get away from guys is if they go to see male strippers. <laughs> see, because when they go to see shows like this, it's for women only. But when the show's over, they let the guys in then, don't they? Yeah, yeah and they're lined up around the block too, aren't they? <laughs> Just waiting to get in that bar. See, now guys, when we go to see strippers, you never see women lined up around the block. <laughs> Do you? Just waiting outside the bar going, excuse me, there's a bunch of horny men in there? Oh, yeah, that's just what I need. Hey. As we all know, <laughs> and we all know a horny man is hard to find, isn't it? Where do you actually get a hold of one of those? Coming up on the holiday season now, a lot of parties will be going on this time of year. And uh, I actually like giving parties in the summer because uh, you can have them outside and people don't have to trash your house. Right? That's the best thing about them, you know? And when you're giving a party, you always want your party to be different and unique in some way. And I went to a really wild party this summer. I went to a party that had a trampoline at it, you know? <laughs> oh man, you think drinking and driving don't mix. <laughs> yeah, who thought this was a good idea? Yeah, we'll have lots of drinks and we'll bounce a little bit. That goes well. Yeah, and that's all you need are your drunk friend spotting you. <laughs> You come flying off there out of control. He went in a tree! I don't think you guys understand when you spot someone, you're supposed to push them back, not watch where they go. That's not how it works. Now here's something you'll never hear two guys say at a party. Hey Frank, will you split a beer with me? I can't drink all this. <laughs> don't make that little wimpy face. Ooh. <laughs> The worst thing about giving a party, you're always wondering whether or not people are having a good time. And uh, you can always tell when guys are having a good time, when they start putting their arms around one another, telling each other, I love you. <laughs> and I'm not drunk either, you know? I'm not just saying that. Yeah, then why are you putting your tongue in my ear? All right, all right, all right you got me on that one. You know, I was at this party later on in the evening, a big discussion broke out about uh, men and women, you know, and what they want from one another. And uh, it was kind of weird. The guys were saying, how come women don't take guys out that often? And uh, women will take guys out every now and then. I'll give them credit for that. But usually, guys, you got to take them out a hundred times before you get that free date. Right? Ooh, is this our hundredth date? Oh, okay, I'll treat. Mm. 
to usually take you to dinner or something. You know? I'm thinking a hundred dates. I'm thinking a trip to Hawaii. You know? That's what I deserve. Yeah. And you always wind up eating all the time when you're on a date. And, uh, you know, I like going out to restaurants, but really fancy restaurants make me nervous. I took this one girl out. I'm trying to impress her. We get to the restaurant. We're having a great time. I'm eating. I'm talking to her. But while I was talking to her, something flew out of my mouth. <laughs> You ever have that happen on a date? Man, that's embarrassing. And it hit her? Yeah. And I saw it hit her. So I have no excuse for not saying anything, but when it happens, all you want to know is, hey, does she know? If she doesn't know, I'm not going to bring it up. You're thinking, yeah, she knows, because she's going, well, yeah, that's really interesting, uh huh? <laughs> I'm ready to go home. Women won't eat in front of a guy if they don't know him that well. All right, first few times you take a lady out, they won't eat. Food comes, they just look at it like they don't know what it is. And then they make up some excuse for you to go up and get them something. You come back and it's gone. It's a whole plate of food when I left a minute ago. You've been pigging out, haven't you? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. See now guys, when you want to impress a woman and you take her out, there's certain things you have to order. Things like uh, strawberries and champagne. Right, we all know that's romantic. Don't order things like beer and nuts. <laughs> Beer's not romantic. You're sitting there, nice candlelight dinner, talking to the woman you're with. It's like, well, honey, you know I love you. <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh. oh, that gave me no warning. I am really sorry. Oh, it scared me too. Oh, it scared me too. <laughs> Once I was on this nightmare date, you ever have one of those where nothing goes right? And I'm out with this one lady, and uh, actually it's the same lady I spit food on. It got worse. Later on in the evening, I fell down the steps. I don't know if you know it, but there's no cool way of falling down the steps. You usually get to a point where you know you're going down and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, 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 oh God, oh no. You know. When you get down to the bottom, you hop up really quick like nothing happened, brush yourself off, thinking, well, maybe she blinked and missed that. Maybe she didn't see that. And if you ever had it happen when you're with your friends, they always do the same thing. They act like they're really concerned. Ooh, you okay? You all right? Then if you say, yeah, then they start laughing. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Oh, <laughs> she just saw your face. Oh, eyes going up in your head. I was like, oh, my God. I've never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> Women fall down a lot. They get dressed up with the high heels on. They always blame it on the pebbles, too. You, you ever been walking along with your date and she just disappears? Like, where'd you go? I was just talking to her. And get up off the ground, big runner in her stockings. It's time to attract your accent pebbles. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is carpet. I, you ever have this happen? You see someone you know and they're waving to you, so you wave back, but they're really waving to that person behind you? They always try to make you feel better. Hey, oh, I didn't see you. Well, hi, how are you? you know? they try to act like you're waving to the person behind them. I'm waving to the guy behind you. I couldn't care less who you're waving to. I just get embarrassed too easily, though. Guys ever go over to someone's house and you have the dog smell your crotch? Isn't that the worst? Especially you go with three or four people at the same time and he picks you? Oh yeah, feeling proud, nah, aren't you? Can't be any prouder than that. Sometimes you're afraid to move, but it's a Doberman dog. He knows you're not going anywhere. He's banging his head in there, moving around. You got little beads of sweat forming on your head. The owner's not saying anything because he's enjoying it. He just says something like he likes you. Well, yeah, I like him too, but not like that, you know. I don't even like to go to the store and buy toilet paper if it's the only thing I have to get. Hey, I know I want to run in the store and run out. I run in the store, there's going to be a long line in there. I'm standing at the end of the line looking stupid with just a roll of toilet paper in my hand. Everyone turns around. Oh yeah, that's an emergency. Come to the front. Oh yeah, this guy got things to do. Let's get him out of here. You go to the store for something like that, you act like you didn't come to get toilet paper. You get toilet paper and a Snickers. You know. Really came for that Snickers. Just thought I'd get some toilet paper. I was here. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. We were talking at this party about uh, men and women, you know, and what they spend their money on. You know, and women say they have to buy a lot of things guys don't have to buy. Things like clothes and shoes. And I can understand clothes because styles change a lot for women. But why do women love shoes so much? This is weird to guys, you know, because guys, before you're 30, you only have two pairs of shoes. Right? Tennis shoes and funeral shoes. And that's it, you know? And women love shoes for some reason. You ever walk in a mall with a woman, they walk past that shoe store, they just start having an orgasm, don't they? It's like, oh my God, we gotta stop, ooh. <laughs> the hell's wrong with you? I don't know, shoes, shoes, It's like, hey, I spent three hours with you in bed, I can't make you do that, what are you doing? <laughs> Here's a little tip for you guys. Next time you're in bed with a woman, just at the right moment, whip out a pair of new pumps. It's like, oh shoot.